I'm Neethi the Pharmacist. I'm um, a lifestyle coach with over 25 years of practical experience. I am a wife and a mother, and I'm the author of the book, um, Farm to Fork Meat Riot. So welcome to my food church. And I'm so excited today that we are continuing our conversation about natural law. And I have B with tag here today. I'm so excited for life done free. Uh, we have, you know, free, free man means free mankind. We're going to get into that. So, you know, B's a woman, but you know, and I'm a woman and Emily's a woman. Emily, welcome. Emily is the developer and creator of the inner clarity system. And um, we are trying to, you know, encourage everyone to understand and look up words when we're talking about natural law and the power of language that has been kind of stolen and adulterated with linguistics theft. So um, when we're saying things, we're going to really uh, dive a little bit deeper each time um, to get into the definitions of the words that we're saying, not because we think that you, um, you know, just don't understand language or something like that, but because we want people to understand specifically that they have on purpose gone and, um, okay, they're having trouble with rumble, just everybody. Of course, you know, I'm getting banished from all the places again, and we'll just, we're just going to post the replay, but hopefully um, we got folks that are jumping in here live on Instagram. If you have any questions for us, friends, we really do um, look forward to your participation and um, same with on um, YouTube for friends, you know, like we're interested in, in, um, in your questions. So please, you know, participate with us there as well. Welcome, everybody. B, you want to talk first and, and tell everybody about what you're up to and about yourself? Well, um, I am Tag's wife, um, and we are the Life Done Free um, couple. Mm -hmm. um, we had, uh, well, he had a corporate job, and I, at that time, was a stay-at-home mom, and um then uh we <laughs> um broke out of the matrix kind of had to <laughs> change stuff up because of certain things that were going on i got fired and um <laughs> we kind of had to 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 change things around and we decided that together we were going to work even harder to have choices that uh, were not allowed to us previously. Um, so they were allowed. They were allowed. I'm gonna. I want to say something. You guys are so awesome, and the reason is because when you when the way that natural law views what you did, it was moral action because you were standing up for truth. When you were being forced or trying to be coerced into immoral action by standing in lies and you didn't do it. Right. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, right. I like to word it that we were forced to make a choice. Right. Well, you know, um, everybody is is supposed to be making that choice every day. And why is it that the world isn't operating in that morality. And was that what people, uh, you know, like when people talk about end times, I mean, when you get into these religious discussions with people, when they get mad at me about my food church and stuff, then they want to always like, you know, bring up religion and bring up my religion and what is my religion. And I'm like, not going to talk about it because I, I literally won't talk about it on purpose because not because I'm not, I don't have any faith or I don't have, I don't have a faith system. It's just that it is irrelevant for this conversation. My personal beliefs are irrelevant for the conversation of natural law, which is just happening all the time for everybody like gravity. And so I don't want people to be skewed by this incorrect position of personal belief when I'm not talking about my personal beliefs. I don't operate in my personal beliefs. I'm operating 
in law, under the law, under the universal law, and which is which is from love. It is from love. And so that is all I have to say about it. And, you know, everything else that that I was raised with or practice in any other way, shape or form or that any of you do. I mean, you know, there's all these cultural things that we do because it brings us joy and it's part of our heritage or culture or something. But that has not anything to do with this law in which we are loving every other human, 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 free man, mm -hmm. free mankind, free human mm -hmm. and mankind and womankind. And Emily, I just wanted to have you speak a little bit too, because I'm not trying to exclude you. <laughs> what would you like me to say? I want um, you to be welcome. Welcome to the conversation. <laughs> I am very welcome. I feel the love. I am here with you. <laughs> what do you think, Emily? I'm going to, you know, I want everybody to pay attention to our um, our little banners here. What do you think of this banner for today? Um, I personally think that uh, whenever I look at, you know, worthiness and it being your quality of being good enough, there's for me i've arrived and there's peace and there's security and there's assurance in that but when i look at quality as the state of being equal i feel like i'm in competition like that there's still something for me to earn and that it's not a done deal yet mm -hmm. mm. wow and then I want to remind everybody that you're born worthy. You are born worthy. I don't like this conversation of equality. And I'm really excited that B just B and Tag just made a video about men and women not being equal. Mm -hmm. But let's just also, I'm going to take it a step further. None of us are equal to each other. Yes. None of us. Because nature is not repeatable. Every snowflake is different. There is not another me. There is no way. There's no one else that can offer to the world what I have to offer to the world. And it, it, it is, like you said, not repeatable. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, there is no equal to me. Mm -hmm. There is zero equal to me. Nope. And, and how cool is that? Right. It's, exciting. it's so exciting because nobody thinks the way that I do or creates the thing that I do, you know, or that B does like you guys are. OK, so I was watching the video where B was talking about that and she's talking about doing the room. Girl, you are freaking. She is badass. She's like building oh, yeah. this room. And I'm just like, gosh, like, I don't think I could lay stone. I mean, I guess I could. You just make me want to go do it because I'm just like, I could do that if B did it. She made the chimney inside the whole house. Like what? That's part of her finishing work. Like that's pretty incredible. Okay. And I just think it's fun to watch you guys play because you can, you have this black blank canvas there mm -hmm. and you're just playing mm -hmm. every day. It's kind of like you created your own reality. Is that what you did? Yeah. How, do we, how do you want to answer that? I would say, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is our reality. I yeah, mean, I, I think that, that the goal was, for me, was to never again be put in a position where someone could hang stroke over my head. And in that, created my own life I didn't need a vacation from. You know, we joke all the time on the channel about bees on vacation. And you guys will hear me say it a million times. Like, I'll catch her in the worst positions with a drill in her hand or carrying something. Ah, oh, you're busted. You're on vacation. But what I really mean is we're living our vacation. There's a hidden message in there that says B is living the life B said tag. This is the life I want. She's living that exact life. And so, yes, she, my wife is on vacation a hundred percent of the time. I mean, this is what life is. Friends. Yeah. This is what life is. People, people, my husband gets mad at me sometimes and he'll say, Hey, Nithi, you need to, um, you need to, have a schedule. 
because I just work all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, I guess you need me to have a schedule for you. <laughs> I think you want to get on my schedule. That's what you want. But do you want yes. to get on my schedule? <laughs> yes. So that's right, Riley T86. There's nobody equal to you. That's the beauty. The the tapestry is what we are here for. Yes. Gosh. When I think it's interesting, we all offer some such unique things that we can give back to the world and that we can give to each other and we can give to our community. And we spent so much time being dumbed down. And, and you guys hear me harp on the education system all the time, but, you know, dumbed down to that. And then my next, by the way, my next Star of the Beast video, which comes out on Monday, is about living in fear. But, um, so it'll be out Monday. But um, we spend all this time in trying to be the same. And then in a constant state of fear, we've lost what makes things great. You know, it's, I told me and B were talking about this last night and I was telling her that it's such a shame to me that society has taken away what makes a woman such a magical creature. Wow. And they are magic. They are absolute magic and should be put on a pedestal and treated as the queen that they are. And, and what about we, the men? That's the opposite side. Men should be treated as the king that they are. And they're not. They're not. Oh, no, no. We uh, we want everyone to be exactly the same. We want them to be equal, which is the definition. Right. And it's not about that. It's not about that at all. You know, and uh, B and I have the same value, but I'm telling you, she's so much better at so many things. It ain't even close. <laughs> I mean, value. I think that that's this is the problem with society. Mm -hmm. So the linguistics theft has taken equality and somehow want you the you know people out there and to believe that value and equality means the same thing does not it just it, it doesn't mean anything the same and they have entire campaigns mm -hmm. on this and um i mean people are very upset i know that ever since i've been talking about natural law more focused in this way with this this new series that I just started mm -hmm. that a lot of folks in the food church who are here who like what I'm doing for the food are like you can tell they're mad <laughs> they're, they're kind of disturbed about what I'm talking about but if we want to break out of the bondage that we have freely chosen to participate in yep um, then ed knowledge is required. Action is required. What did you do? And I mean, I know you say you were forced to do it. So I'm glad you were forced to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you were forced to do it. But I mean, so what? You weren't as much of a man before. Are you discovering that you've changed your mindset as a side effect of that? Do you have more confidence to be a man now? Or what? I mean, this is a serious question tag. I'm just, I'm wondering. Yeah. You know, I've always been a guy's guy. Anybody who knows me, I'm a hundred percent guy's guy, you know? Um, and uh, so I always knew that and, and being a great man was always important to me and, you know, living, <coughs> excuse me, life to my terms was important to me. But what, what my experience did for me is it just reminded me that I am a hundred percent responsible for what happens to me in my life. Mm. And not only am I responsible for the actions, right? Because everything that happens to me is my fault, win or lose. If I do good, it's my fault. If I do bad, it's my fault. Either way, it's my fault, but it's also taking responsibility for my beliefs. Fault. I own my thought. Fault and, is misunderstood, maybe. Fault. Yeah, I think yeah, I think the word fault is misunderstood, but but I would still say when I make a decision that works out great, it's my fault. And if I make a decision that works, does not work out great, that's also my fault. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, I mean, yeah, I think I, you know, I like to say, look what I did. Mm -hmm. I did that, you yeah. know, and nobody wants to say I did that when it's not the way that you wanted it to turn out. But that is the part of taking responsibility that is freedom, friends. That is freedom. Yep. You have to be accountable to your actions, win or lose. And, you know, I, I have people argue this to me all the time and they'll say, Tag, well, I was, you know, 
I lost my marriage because, you know, my husband committed adultery or whatever it was. Right. And I, I'll always say to them, it's still your fault. This, this does not excludes the, exclude their actions, nor does it take their fault or their responsibility out of it. But your decisions are what put you there, whether it was you chose to marry him, you chose to stick around, you chose to not give them the things that they needed, whatever it was. At the end of the day, you have to be accountable to your actions. And I'm telling you, 100 percent of what happens in my life is my fault, period. And fault, by the way, is the perfect word. Isn't it liberating? Oh, I love it. Yes. <laughs> I, I think it's liberating. Okay, I'll tell you what, like people don't like it when I say, and I've written it in my book. I wrote it in my book. I wrote it in here, y'all, where I said it was my fault. Mm -hmm. I am the reason that my daughter died because I'm an idiot and I let somebody talk me into letting them letting them be in charge of us i let them do that i'm we're so free we even choose bondage this is what i say all the time we are so free we can even choose bondage and and people say to me you know sometimes neaty but you know sometimes we just don't have a choice like we just don't have a choice and i'm like you always have a choice. What do you yeah. think, B? I agree. Hey, B, you should tell them a little bit about, if you don't mind, if it's not too personal, because you coming up, you had an incredible choice to make based upon the examples that were given. you. Right. And you chose had, something different. And if you, I don't know if she, I might've just opened up a can here, but. <laughs> I had um, very poor uh, Example. examples, right. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, you know, I, uh, you're the youngest of, yes, I'm, I'm the youngest of seven children and my parents were married and then they divorced and then they were married again. My mom had been married 11 times. Um, so, uh, you know, as a, uh, as a seven year old, she spent time in an orphanage and then became, um, uh, uh, impregnated by her stepfather who ended up in a, a unwed a, a home for un, unwed mothers then the child was taken from her and you know bad example and and self selfishness led her down her path which then made her the mother that she was and I, and I have watched several of your videos Nikki and you had said you know our mothers love us they just didn't know. Right. And, and she had bad examples, you know, for her growing up. And so how do I expect her to be this, you know, phenomenal, you know, person if she didn't know any better. And then she was the mother early, you know, very early teens. And then, you know, several times thereafter. And um, I found myself married before I even graduated high school. And I was destined to go down that same path. And, you know, my first husband, I, I remember we were arguing and I was, I, we were living in a one bedroom apartment and I was curled up in the corner in the ball in the back of the closet because I just couldn't get away from him, you know, far enough. And and he was an alcoholic and, and verbally abusive. And he barreled into the closet and he said, don't expect me to feel sorry for you. And at that point in time, I got up and we were living, he was in the Navy. So we were clear across, you know, away from everybody that I knew and everything that of, of comfort. And so I, I found myself sitting at the beach in the middle of the night by myself and a box of Kleenex and I'll never forget this man came up to me in the middle of the night. You know, I'm, I'm 18 years old sitting at the beach by myself in the dark. And he came up and I don't, I don't remember, you know, word for word what he said, but basically was like, this is going to pass. This is, you're going to be better. This is not, this is not going to be your future. And I was, I, I, you know, bawling as hard as I could. And I, you know, opened my eyes and he was gone. And I'm like, 
get out of here, <laughs> you know, get out of here. And so I, you know, get back to, to my apartment and realized at that point in time, I'd made mis- my decisions that this life that I was putting myself in was not where I wanted to be. And no matter what happened, as long as I did not, you know, I had to move forward. I had to take action. Yep. And at that time, I realized that I was worthy of happiness and I was, you know, destined for something better than than what I had been shown. And um, I just, you know, went fa- I went to school and tried to better myself to, to be able to take care of myself. And I knew that I had to take care of myself and be responsible for my own actions. And, and, the, and the, the life that I was going to lead had to be from me. And so I, I went to massage school and I did 1500 hours of, of classes and um, got a license in the most, uh, in the hardest state to get a massage license in, which was Nebraska. You had to have 1500 hours of, of education. And then to open my own practice, which then, you know, required business license and business plans. And then um I met Tag. He uh, actually fixed my microwave. <laughs> I was like, hey, I got all kinds of things broken, honey. <laughs> and so um, he fixed my microwave. And I, I realized that, you know, my decisions in life were all mine. And I had to be accountable for them. But I was worthy of, of greatness. And and love and respect and um the uh I, I, that was a whole lot more than i had expected to share but um first of all can i just thank you for that man that's a that, lot that was that amazing was, that was incredible and what a brilliant 18 year old you are yeah, i know right my goodness i'm gonna tell you when i was 18 i was a dumb dumb and I feel like, you know, like I think back and I, I think back to when I was, gosh, I don't know when I, I feel like I was just not that smart for a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think what you did was brilliant. You know what it was, was I was always trying to figure out why nothing made sense. Mm-hmm. Why couldn't anybody just explain anything to me that could make make, make it make sense? And, you know, because I remember, um, you know, I was a psych major and I was studying human behavior and, you know, there's a lot of abnormal psychology that you go through. And and I was trying to figure out our parents and our then that makes you quite, you know, like when you go to these institutions, then, of course, they challenge and, you know, they try to corrupt religion because they don't want you to have any belief or any faith or anything like that or any hope or anything good. <laughs> so, so you start wondering and questioning all those things, just like the divide and conquer, you know, purpose of the institutions, which where they try to come between you and your parents and anybody who didn't watch tags video about the education system. I think I'm going to put it in the links below. It's so it's good. Important. It's so important. I have just been blasting that everywhere because it is such an important video for people to see, to know how all of us were programmed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when I was listening to it, it was making me so angry. (laughs) And and I was so proud of myself for pulling my kids out um, and never, well, Govey was only in kindergarten and I'd ever let him stay. Um, And it was because Mina saved his life because when, when my daughter died, then he was going through grief and I would hold him close and let him stay home when, you know, he was having a hard day to which I was threatened by the public mm-hmm. school system for letting him be home because, you know, he needed to be in school. And I was like, his sister died. OK, so, no, he'll be home with us, with the family. And um, they were trying to take custody of our children all the time mm-hmm. because of everything that all the medical decisions we made with Mina. I mean, we were already in their system, so they were trying to take custody of all my children. It was 
ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And so I withdrew him from public school and I never let my children be part of any, anything like that. And I'm not allowing him to go to university right now, which is a very big source of contention. He thinks that I'm trying to keep him from being successful. And I keep trying to introduce him to, I mean, he knows the people in our world, you know, I just need, you know, tag and all my other male friends to, <laughs> to let him know he's not missing nothing, you know, um, as I mean, I, people have said that to him that are in our network. And I think that he thinks that I tell them to say that. And I'm like, I don't know what they're saying to you because I'm not, I mean, I don't take my children anywhere that I don't want them to be immersed in the people that are going to be there, you know, and I feel like they, you know, I'm, I'm don't put my children in bubble wrap. I take them to the places that, you know, we go to so that they can be immersed in the diversity and the tapestry of the people that are there. And, you know, and then we have conversations about those exchanges in the day, like, how did the day go? What did you think? You know, how, how, what do you, what do you think about this? But I made him watch that video tag. I made the kids watch your video. And can, I can said, I, can I give your son a message? Yes. So to share this with him, ask him if his definition of success is to spend four years at a university after which to get a job and to work 40 years for an employer. So which at the end, he will retire and be given a gold watch and told to piss off so that at that point he can go on social security where he can spend the next five years to which then he will die as Medicare spends down all of his assets and he will leave this world as broke as he entered it. Ask him if that is his definition of success. Thank you. So true. So true. I retired at the age of 43 and yep. it was the best decision I ever made. I was yep. so grateful. Yeah. He, my son is the reason that I retired because he was born prematurely. Mm -hmm. He was four pounds. He was this big Aww. and there was no way I could leave him yeah. with somebody because I'm supposed to now leave him somewhere. Mm -hmm. Are you joking? Like you would have to kill me. <laughs> yeah. Get your hands on him. And so he doesn't know that he's the reason that I quit my job. He's the reason because I thought I was going to work with kids and, you know, be super mom like everybody because, you know, I was programmed just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I was not intending not to work. I was 100% going to work until he was born. And I was like, dude, this is, I can't leave my itty bitty little baby. Like, who does this? How can people leave? Like, I don't understand how they leave their children. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't understand it. And I told my husband, I was upset. I was crying. I was apologizing to my husband. Like, I can't leave. Like, I don't know. This is something I cannot do. I said, I will never ask you to take me out to eat. I don't ever need anything from the store. Like, I don't need anything, <laughs> but I cannot leave this baby. Like, I mean, that's the only thing I want is to stay home, you know? And at first he was like, but we need your income and la, 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 you know? And I was like, do we? I, just, I, will make, I will make it work somehow. And I told him, I said, you know, like you can have whatever you want. I'm just not going to spend any money on me. Like it's fine, you know? And I don't know how we made it. We've made it some kind of way. <laughs> I think it was the mo I think I made more money after that. Mm -hmm. I had more ability to make our money go further I asked my husband, you know, I was like, do you think that um, we really gave that much up? You know, and he said, I think at first it kind of felt like that for a minute. But like in the end, you know, we were able to participate in a very small local um, micro school that we funded for our children's education. They. 100% thought we'd put them in this little micro school. Like it was a fake school. It was, it was lovely. It was lovely. They, you know, they, it was a sugar-free program. They got music. They were immersed in French and in Spanish and they got reading, writing and arithmetic like real 
reading, okay. writing, and arithmetic. I mean, my son can cipher, but he doesn't know that's what he does mm -hmm. because we make meat subscriptions and he can cipher it in his head. Mm -hmm. And he, and, but he doesn't realize that. I mean, mm -hmm. he must know this. I don't know. He's, he's not an idiot. He's 18, but everybody wants to hire my children because they're such good employees. Mm -hmm. And my daughter's only 14 and everybody wants to hire her. I love hiring homeschooling kids. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Yeah. I've hired many. <laughs> yeah. but they work and they actually They're more accountable. They produce things. They're less entitled. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> These kids have been working for me forever and they're the best. That's the best thing I ever did was hire my children mm -hmm. and give them per something to do, give them purpose. Mm -hmm. So isn't it crazy, Neethi, how we're taught a program, right? As we come up that the, the definition of success is keeping up with the Joneses and they purposely make it to where the newest thing wears out in five years. I mean, there's a whole series I could talk about on this, but how, they program us that you got to have the bigger house and the more house, the bigger house. You, you guys ever, you guys probably haven't watched it. Go back in my videos and watch the illusion of equity video. Illusion of equity. Okay. Yes. How equity is a lie. There's no such thing. It doesn't mm. exist. It's been perpetrated upon us that it's there, but it, and I actually break down the math and show you why it's a lie. But um, anyway, um, it's just crazy to me how we've been programmed to live this particular life when the entire time, all it does is keep us in slavery. That's all it does but they want it that way. How can this big machine that does all of these things and wages all of these wars continue if we're not the, you know, the, the soldier on the front line? It can't, it cannot continue unless we continue to just play the game. And I think it's amazing to what you guys are talking about. I wonder what everybody's thinking out there because they want us all to hate each other for color or um, status or gender um, huh gender gender right which there's only two and there i said it and if you don't like it i don't care because that is the law the law is there's a masculine and a feminine and then what they do is they try to convolute it and say well we have more men feminine and we have more. you know what's funny is that i mean some of my dearest friends are you know not um, they're, they, they call themselves faggots is what they, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're, they do, they call themselves faggots and they understand the importance of procreation. They mm -hmm. understand the importance of not having inappropriate conversations with children about mm -hmm. gender or about, I mean, forget, forget about gender. You know, they go straight to sex. That's what they talk about on, on mainstream. Mm -hmm. And it is 100% an inappropriate conversation for children. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, they don't, people don't, people, no one is outraged by this. Mm -hmm. No one's outraged by this. Mm -hmm. You know, I think for me, what do you guys think about this? I had to realize that what I was doing was immoral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because it was operating in a lie. That's mm -hmm. all I was going to say. Yeah, I think that's 100% true. And I think the thing is, is we look for everyone else to, to validate our value. And we look for everyone else to justify what we're doing when what we need to do is look inside ourselves. This is, again, back to the holding yourself accountable for your beliefs and for the actions and for the things that happen around you. And the problem is we don't look internal anymore. You know, we put all of our weight on what someone else thinks of us versus trying to hold yourself true to what truly makes you you and you you know what your beliefs are and i couldn't agree more i mean i think we have got to stop this whole cycle of this but the problem has been programmed for so long and at so many levels it's almost impossible to stop almost i mean it is just it's incredible and the second that you take one step outside of the <laughs> matrix you're just like inundated with like resistance and mm -hmm. like what your dad's saying, what your brother's saying, what your neighbor's saying, what, you know, what you're seeing on social media. And so you put one toe out in the water and then you're like, no, mm -hmm. like, no, yep. no, I don't want to, I don't want to be brave. I don't want to step into my truth. Um, oh yeah. You, you got to watch my living in fear video coming out. Um, Cause this is what it talks about, you know, is this exact thing. And you know, a lot of people talk to me about 
tag, you went off grid because you guys know I live 100% off grid. I have no services, zero. And um, they say, man, that must be so nice. You know, you're saving the planet or whatever, whatever. And it ain't any of that. I did it so they couldn't hold the stroke over my head so that I was in a position to go fight. I just think it's incredible you have internet. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. How do you do that without the stroke? How? How? Well, here's the thing. You have certain electives. Right. So the electives are your cell phone. Could they shut my cell phone on? Yeah. Could they shut my internet off? Yeah. But those are all electives. What I did is I said, okay, like, I don't know if you know this or not. If you're connected to the power grid, okay, which most people are, that power company has the right to come on your property, inspect, do whatever they want, whatever they want. You have no say in it. Right. Or the Fourth Amendment does not apply. Yes. And these are the ways they'll get to us. They'll come in through all of these fronts. And so my goal is to because eliminate. Because you allow it. Because you allow it, right? right? Because we allow it. So I just went out and said, hey, I'm going to eliminate every single front I can possibly eliminate, make it to where the only thing they can take from me wouldn't really matter to me anyway. And I'm so that I'm in a position now, like I wouldn't got completely off grid and completely broke the cycle and then got on YouTube and said, it's a lie. I took which the offense, right? But I had to get my life squared away first. Um, and so we cashed everything in and did everything to get us to that exact point. Hey, I wanted to say something about what Bethany was talking about earlier too. Perception is such an amazing thing. You know, when I met Bethany. Who's I was Bethany? B. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My other one. Um, I was like, wait a minute. Is somebody else in this? <laughs> when I met B, I remember thinking to myself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I come from a very successful career. And so people were always trying to take from me. And so when I met Bethany, you know, obviously my, my wall is up a little bit. But I, was, I became so enamored with her because she did it on her own. She didn't mm. need, me. she owned her own house. She owned her own business. She didn't need me. She wanted me. Mm. And that was such a big thing for me because yeah. it was just, it was just a remarkable experience for me. And um, I didn't know all this stuff at the time. I thought she was all put together. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, it, no, it's been a great run. That's amazing. And I think that that puts us in a place of power as women. Mm. Yes. To make a decision because I've had three marriages mm -hmm. and they were absolute train wrecks and I should have left every single one of them. One of them it got five counts of felony child abuse for what he did yeah. to my son. Yeah. Um, and when I look back now, if I was me, who I am now, my true real self, those men wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have even known their name, <laughs> right. I, much less date them, much less marry them. Yeah. Like they wouldn't have even been on my radar, but I wasn't operating in my true self. I was operating in this like needy, like uh, victim mentality. And mm -hmm. I was just poor me. I, I need, uh, I need help. Mm -hmm but I didn't realize that I was my own help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you were programmed, you know, Bethany was told her whole life yeah. that she was the pretty dumb one. Oh, her whole life. You're her sister was the smart one. one. She was the pretty dumb one. Smart one. Whole life. You're the pretty brave one. And yeah. you know, that's what you are is the pretty brave one. Like the great, great. I was told all my life. I was too tall. I was, too, you know, skinny. I know I don't look like that now, but there was a time when I was like just a stick. Okay. And that I was, you know, too loud. I was too, too bright, too, whatever, you know, always too much of whatever, everything. And, you know, the attitude, my mom used to say that she has one child who's grounded, who she's trying to, trying to push her out you know, that was my sister. And then she's like, you know, then this other one, I got to try to tie her down to a, find a rock big enough to hold her down because <laughs> she you can't hold her down. <laughs> and that was me. She was constantly diminishing me, like constantly diminishing me. Yep. And, you know, she's the reason why all I do is praise my children. Mm -hmm. I mean, all I do is praise them. And that is what, um, you know, my biggest lesson in how to operate in natural law was, and Minak Minakshi taught me this too. Like, I can't tell you the things that she taught me and how she did it. It was in freaking credible because she was two. 
she was two years old. And between two and four, the things that she would say to me when I was momming them, you know, <laughs> when I was repeating the diminishing behavior that I learned from my mother because my mom didn't know any better because her, I don't know who, who taught her that or whatever, but you know, like, I don't know where it came from to her, but I know for me, you know, like my mother was under, so she was like in fight or flight mode because mm -hmm. she was being abused by my deadbeat dad. And she was left alone in this country, left alone, meaning she kicked him out finally, but, mm -hmm. but she was alone having to raise us without any help, without any child support, without any, my dad didn't participate except for being a jerk. So, but what he did do was be stupid enough to let her have the house that she had to come up with money to pay for. Her, but like in, in the eighties, women couldn't own real estate in North Carolina. And because he was a dumbass, she was able to just, as long as she never missed a payment, could have kept the house. Right. And so she did. <laughs> and, but she did it um, with the pressure and the constant fear of losing it, you know? And so she raised us with that constant pressure and fear. Mm -hmm. And so the only way for her to operate was to diminish us because she just didn't have any energy to do anything else. And really she did not, she, what she, what I learned and what Mina taught me was that when you love and praise, it's easier to control people with love and praise. It's easier to control people with love and praise. You still shape them. You still, you still shape them, parents out there. But the way that you shape them is love and praise. You don't have to diminish them to shape them. Yeah, I think parents, though, are kind of set behind the eight ball because what they're taught is we want to keep everybody the same instead of pushing them to be creative and exploring and learning new things. And what do you want to do today? Here, here's a whole pile of sticks and a glue gun. What are we building? No, you, know? you got you to gotta go to school and learn right. the three things. <laughs> right, right. Instead of pushing them to be the, if we did that back in the early days, we wouldn't have Henry Ford. We wouldn't have Walt Disney. We wouldn't have these people who could barely tie their shoe, but were amazing thinkers. Mm -hmm. so we, we take that away and I think it, it'll have a detrimental impact on our future for sure. Why do you think that the musicians today don't know how to do anything but repeat what the older musicians did? Because we've taken away critical thought. Right. It's simple. You're Pretty not supposed cool. to be an individual thinker. It's the dehumanization of humanity, folks. What we're talking about right now is how they attempted to make all of us robots and we just didn't let it happen. And be the way that that random angel man saw you and found you on the beach, that random man, I cannot tell you how many of those random folks have been through my life. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, in my book, I have an entire chapter about how you are worthy and you are important and you matter. And the truth is some angel person came into my brick and mortar in my old brick and mortar, the one where I was being held hostage before for when I originally tried to do, you know, farm to fork meat out before I called it a food church, before I understood all these other things. Um, when I thought it could be run as a regular business, you know, um, I was there. It was awful. I talk about it in my book, friends, like I go into detail about how that was and how it how it changed and how I, why I went into the nonprofit situation and why, you know, like all the things that I thought that it would help improve. Well, during that time, I can't tell you, it was so hard because my kids were really small and I really just felt like I wanted somebody to help me with the kids and nobody would ever come that I could ever count on for that. And thank God that never happened because they had to be there with me. They had to be immersed in everything with me. I had to learn how to do everything with them because that was their college education or whatever was going to happen for them. Right. So like we were going through that and there was this person, this mystery woman. I don't know her name. I don't know her name. I don't know how to find her. She came in one day 
And she was telling me she was interested in volunteering to help us because we were a nonprofit. This is like in the beginning of the nonprofit time. And I was just like trying to figure out how to get this help, you know, or how it would work. And we were just spending time together. And she's like, you need to tell people how important they are. You need to tell people how how worthy they are. And she kind of seemed like a crazy person. And the thing that was interesting was she was coloring with my children at a table because they were small and she was entertaining them. And I was happy that she was helping me do that. And then in the background, she kept saying these things and then she disappeared and I never saw her again. And my kids made these canvases that said, you are important. And another one that said, you matter. And another one that said you were born worthy. And I kept thinking to myself, you know, okay, well, we got these really nice canvases and, you know, like I was having trouble finding, I felt like I need childcare. That was all I was thinking about at that time. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, like, anyway, we made it through it. But then when I started writing my book, I was remembering those canvases and I was like, oh, this is what people really need to hear because they don't even know they can be worthy of this food or whatever. Like they just don't, I mean, everybody's told what they can, they've already been programmed on what they can and cannot have, which brings me to the current day tag, you know, in China, they have that coin system going on. Mm -hmm. um, what do you call it? What's it called officially? You're talking about the social credit system? Yes. Yep. So this social credit system thing that they're trying to do, guys, um, I don't think a lot of people realize that. It's here. You, yeah. huh? it's here. It's already here. It's here. You want to talk about it, Tag? Well, I can tell you that, um, that it works both ways. And this is exciting news for freedom-loving you know, people. But this absolutely works both ways. We can choose who we do business with. We can vote with our dollar. We can control this also. In my uh, Star of the Beast videos, we introduced a theory called UGS, the ungovernable score. If they want to do the social credit score, I'm doing the ungovernable score and we'll combat it. Right? How ungovernable are we? And um, so this is right. This has been a lot of fun for us. But what they want to do is, is basically a, a, a system that let's say you jaywalk. Well, your score goes down or you speak bad of the political parties, your score goes down. And then pretty quick, as it goes down far enough, you can no longer travel. You can't get on a bus. You only get so many. And this, this is going to even get worse because what will happen is they'll regulate your energy. They'll say, okay, you're only allowed this many kilowatts of energy this month because your energy score is here. Or you get full energy, but you're going to pay a higher price. Your insurance premiums are going to be affected because they're going to say, if you're not following the system, then what's going to happen is you're living a risky life. Therefore, your health insurance premiums will be increased because you're not following the system. And so just progressed and progressed and progressed. But here's the thing. We can combat it. Us, we are the many. They are the few. And it's only going to work if we put up with the bullshit. Oh, sorry. It's only going to work if we put up with it. Well, <clears throat> those are lies. <laughs> if we allow them, then we are operating in you know immorality mm -hmm. and i just want to keep saying these words because i don't think anybody gets it and it was very hard for me to accept that you know what i was doing was immoral because mm -hmm. think about it if you are a person of faith you know I mean, what do, what do you guys think that, you know, Christianity says about immorality and what does that look like? And end times when they said everybody was living in immorality, what do you think they were talking about? Emily, what do you think? Uh, absolutely. I think it's very possible um, because if you're um, if you're not operating in your true self, then, you know, you're going against god's will you know what i mean i mean he has this set of plans that are inside of us and it is uh, like i like i said before there is no other emily there is no other emily and so if i don't do the the mission of my soul then it doesn't get done and so i'm literally stealing from the world my emily shaped 
offer that I have to offer to the world. Mm -hmm. Emily, that was said really well, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> the Emily shaped offer. I, that's almost a t-shirt right up there with no one's equal to me. Um, you know, I think if you look around at the world today, I mean, I read an article yesterday of um, a Virginia school allowing Satanist group to form because so that they were, everyone was offered the same opportunity, regardless of your religion. I mean, we're teaching kids about, they get to choose whether they're a boy or girl long before they're able to vote, long before they, I mean, what did I know at six? Nothing, <laughs> nothing. Um, we are living in this land of immorality and um, it's going to come bite us. It's absolutely going to come bite us. And those of you who, out there who are listening today who are not prepared for it are going to have a very rude awakening. Well, when you have a public school system that is um, trying to accommodate a furry. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You're talking about a boy and a girl. Right. Right. And you're talking about a litter box in a classroom. Ridiculous. Talk about distraction. <laughs> I mean, how is that what you send your children to go to school for? All bad. I mean, friends out there, we're trying to, I'm trying to shake everybody up and say, if you're, if you don't, if you don't agree with what the people are doing and you participate anyway, or you stand back and don't say anything at all, you are as immoral as they are. Yep. I mean, all of us in one way or another have disconnected ourselves, removed ourselves from the things that and I mean that's why I don't like it tag when you say that you were forced out mm -hmm. because you weren't forced out you just won't stand for lies so I really wish that you would say that a different way because then it makes it otherwise seem like they wouldn't allow you to participate anyway and you would have wanted to when the truth is you weren't going to be participating in their immorality no. anymore you know, know. The, the, Nithi, that's so crazy about that is really what I mean by that is I was just forced to make a decision. I don't know that I would have had the courage otherwise. I'm not sure. Right. I mean, I'm not back there. I don't know. But the fact of the matter, it wasn't even so much about me. It was about how I didn't feel like I could be a leader and make my employees go through that. And so so I think you're right. And I think I need to work on that. I think the decision was they, they made me make a decision. I couldn't be on the fence anymore. I couldn't be wishy-washy anymore. I couldn't play both sides of the fence anymore. I couldn't just get along to get along anymore. A line got drawn and I had to do something about it. Isn't that what 2020 was? Yes. That For is the people. reason. That is the reason why we should know like firmly that we are at war. Mm-hmm. That's for the people out there that are confused about World War Three. that actually started right behind World War Two, but it was a silent war that was happening. It was a psychological war that was happening. Mm -hmm. If you don't really believe that, then you should believe by 2020 that it was made clear because a lot of people were forced to know that they were walking a line. Mm -hmm. If they didn't really realize it before. Yeah, I don't, know, Nithi, I don't know if you know this or not, but did you know that in 2020, public health officials notified Pfizer that they should um, hold the release of their vaccine until after the elections because it was uh, politically better that way? And Pfizer agreed to hold it. So what does that tell you where their priorities were? Was it about health or was it about politics? Well, right? it's never been about health. Let's right. just call it disease management as it should be. I've been saying that also. Yep. There is no health care. There's only disease management. Please yep. stop calling it what it's not. Do you want to? I, I made a post today that, Emily, you would appreciate this. Um, I said mental health, and I put the average number for children's mental health. There's a, there's a, um, a chart there and it's talking about the mental health issues that children are diagnosed with commonly right now mm -hmm. and the percentages. And I said that mental health disorders are 100% a side effect of malnourishment. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking your language. 100% yeah. <laughs> because people um, don't even know that they're malnourishing their children. 
And they're very quick and easy to put their kids on a pill because everybody's on a pill because, you know, this just, that's why we have pediatricians. It's very profitable. But that's why we have them. What, how, how can, you know, you know what made me think about this the first time, Tag? It's so kind of dumb, actually. But you know that show Survivor? Uh -huh. So I remember when my husband and I were just dating and we were like, we should go be on Survivor. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we used to work out and we were like, this is great. We could do this. We would win, you know, and we were just talking about the mind game. And, you know, we thought we were so genius or something, you know, like, and I said, I said, well, we wouldn't be able to take our allergy medicine and because <laughs> you're not you're not allowed to do certain things or whatever. And I was like going, you know, how did people, you know, how, how did people, you know, operate in Little House in the Prairie Times, you know? And then it made me like dive into this deep thing of like, how can we be on Survivor? How can we be on the game? You know, what do we have to do to be on the game? And then I thought, like, it's not even a game. Like, people just should know how to live like this because, you know, it's just life. <laughs> and then um, and then a friend of ours said, well, we don't really live in nature, Neethi. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, my gosh, people are people are crazy. They don't understand that just because you live in town doesn't mean that we are not human animals immersed in nature. Yeah, Nithi and I would argue uh, to what Riley said on there about fifth generation warfare, you are playing the game. You're living it. You're living it right now. Yep. One big game of Survivor. This is Survivor. Yep. This is Survivor. You and know what? I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was so funny. Someone said to me, um, someone said to me, Emily, they said, Emily looks like she just doesn't really want to be on this conversation with you. She doesn't have too much to say. And I, and Emily, I told Emily about it, you know, and Emily goes, stop listening to people. <laughs> what are they talking about? I don't do anything I don't want to do. <laughs> She's like, they don't obviously know me very well. Okay. Cause like I showed up. <laughs> Emily, you need to bring a, uh, just a pretend mic to every show so that you can just constantly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do anything I don't want to do. <laughs> I can get a lot said with just few words. <laughs> and those two words would be? She said a few words. A few words. I thought she said two words. Oh, a few words. No, I can get a lot said with just a few, with few words. I don't have to say a lot. Okay. Even, But if you let me, I won't shut up. <laughs> I think you guys have amazing stories. I think all three of you ladies are, you know, an inspiration to, you know, many other young, you know, women out there. And I hope they watch. I hope they listen. And I hope they understand that equal means the same. And you don't, it doesn't matter. You're special. You're, you're, you know, you're a flower and they're all different. And, you know, it's celebrate it. You know, I mean, wasn't happy. that the fun, you guys, when we were young, younger, mm -hmm. and we would go, um, like, I remember when, um, when you, you know, when you're in your early 20s, and you're dating, or I don't know, I guess you guys weren't because y'all were married, and I wasn't, I was like, mm -hmm. I was, I was hanging out with my friends, because, you know, we were, we were super programmed, and we had jobs, and mm -hmm. we were young professionals, and we were on our beach vacations and stuff. And so we'd be at the beach and we were like, hey, guys, you know. Um, <clears throat> and, and we were like several, all, all the girls that were in the group, we were a tapestry. And then we would meet a group of guys who were a tapestry. Mm -hmm. And then we used to go hang out with the guys during the day. And then the evening we'd all get together and all the girls, we would be like trying to pair. See, you would be really good with so-and-so or you know, you'd be trying to <laughs> up or whatever. And, um, and, and I was, I mean, I'm just thinking back on that right now. Like, you know, all of my friends were so totally different, but we all loved each other. We all loved hanging out together, yeah. you know, and, but every single one of us was like night and day, mm -hmm. you know, so.
Anyway, all right, we're getting up on the hour, and I know everybody has things to do. We just get together, and we have so much fun. These conversations, you know, like we can continue them for hours and hours and hours giving examples. But I really do hope that this series is helping helping you folks out there. Tag and B, thank you so much for joining us today. B, I'm so excited you jumped on and I would love for you to join as much as you can in the next couple of weeks. Like I want to continue the series, you know, through to the end of the year. And Emily, thank you so much for making time to come every week um, and be a part of it. And for all the people out there that want her to talk more, I mean, she does like smile and nod a lot because she agrees. I don't know. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I feel like you talk all the time because I I hear your voice in my head about all the different things that we've talked about over all these years. <laughs> it's like it's so funny what what folks think when they're watching. But I hope everyone will continue to join us. What do you think, Tag and B? What do you guys want people to walk away with from today's conversation? Um, I would like to say that you know those who are who, who are listening. Life is, you know, 10% what happens to you and 90% how you choose to react to it. So, you know, get up and do something about your life if you don't like where you're at mm -hmm. and um, be easy on yourself. And you are worthy of, of all the great things that life does have to offer. Emily, what do you think? Amen. I second that. And um, I'll, I'll just say what I said before. There is no other you. There's not even someone who's kind of like you. Um, you're completely unique. And um, you're you're literally stealing from the world if you don't um, present your best self. Yes. I think that's a great way to leave this is quit stealing from the world. Another T-shirt. You got to go into business. <laughs> Another T-shirt. Quit stealing Another from the world. We need you. Yes, we need you. Oh, even better. Yes. That's a good shirt to make. We need you. Yes. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. All right, guys. Well, thank you for hanging out. We are going to be sharing this everywhere. I have to share and post it. I Hopefully, um, if we keep doing this, then my lives can grow because... People will just force their way in somehow, like just bogart your way and get in somehow <laughs> so that we can have you on here with us. And until next week, um, I hope you guys have a great, great time and think about what we said, you know, and just know you were born worthy and equality has nothing to do with us, has nothing to do with us. <laughs>